Hello, this is Mr. Wright again. Welcome to the mallet percussion section. This is a xylophone right here. Notice it's shaped just like a keyboard, like a piano keyboard. You've got your uh, black keys right there, groups of three, two, three, two, on and so. Then the white keys would be down there in this bottom row. But this is a xylophone, and um, the way that you play the xylophone, I, I can only use one hand right now, but you, you can either strike in the middle of the bar right here, or on the edge of the bar. That's especially important up here. But you don't want to play right there where the, the, the string goes through or the rope goes through. That's because it's kind of dull. So you can play either right here or right there. And you could use two hands. You can play one right there and one on the other um, to do when you're doing rolls and such. But uh, that's where you can play the xylophone at. I'm going to lay this down. I'm going to go over the bells. Notice the bells are set up the same exact way. You've got your uh, white keys on the bottom, black keys on the top. So learning to play in the piano is very much just like playing uh, the right hand on the piano is like playing the xylophone, xylophone and the bells. And then we've got the chimes. Now on the chimes, it's a little bit different. Uh, we use a mallet like this and uh, there's this pedal down at the bottom that we press down and it releases these tubes or these chimes I should say. And we, we're going to strike the chimes on the corner of it, not on the sides. I'd put a dent on it and mess up your intonation. Don't want to do that. There's this little cap there that's real rugged right there. It's, it's nice and strong. And, and I can lift up my foot and it mutes it. I'll press it back down, the sustain bar there. And uh, but that's where you want to play on the chimes, not on the sides again and not on the very top but just to add an angle on that, on that corner right there and it really sets that thing to vibrate and has a really rich sound to it. But of course it's also set up just like a piano. You've got your top row of keys, the black keys at the top and then the white keys at the bottom just like a piano. And uh, so learning to play the piano is an awesome thing if you're going to become a percussionist. It's, it's, it's essential. A lot of percussionists, um, of course I, we don't have a marimba right here, hoping to get one in the future, but uh, uh, marimba players who become percussionists in college, um, they, they, a lot of times they will memorize, they'll learn to play a piece that they have to play on marimba or on bells or whatever, mainly on marimba. They'll learn it on a piano and uh, then after they get it memorized, then they'll transfer it to one of the mallet instruments because it's really tough. You, on a piano, let me see if I can swap hands, on a piano you can use your hands and uh, you can feel the keys where you're at, like D, E, F sharp, G, A, B. And you, you have this finger and you can find, feel where you're at. But on a mallet instrument, you've got this extension going on where you, it's, you have to use your, your peripheral vision or your side vision to be able to, to you, you're having to kind of look, it's hard to look up at your music and look at the bars at the same time. So you get to this habit of where you can kind of feel it. Now on a marimba, the, the bars are much fatter which makes it a little bit easier to use your peripheral vision or side vision. But uh, a lot of times the guys will actually learn to play their pieces on a piano, then transfer it. So any work that you can do to study piano, to practice it, you can get adult piano method books and uh, start teaching yourself. Uh, if you've been through a band method book, you can e easily teach yourself to play piano by going through a piano method book by just following the instructions and reading everything. So hopefully that's helpful to you.